Welcome once again to ExplainingComputers.com and to my 100th Explaining Computers video. Yes, I've now said welcome once again or welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers, say it with me, .com 100 times. I really can't believe it, but if I look at my video manager, there's 99 videos there now, so this must be video 100. So, what am I going to do in this video? Well, you already know, I'm going to do a desk tour. People have been asking me to do that on this channel for a long time, and it seemed a great thing to do in this centenary video. So, here we are in my office. The room I've done all my work in, all my video editing and client work and writing and all that stuff in since uh, about 1998, 1999. Now, when I moved into this property to give you a bit of context, as you can see, this room was all dark green, very strange, and therefore I had to do loads of DIY, loads of painting to get the wall to a more sensible colour. For some reason I took some video of this, I can't quite remember now, but I found it out today, and I put all the shelves up on the wall, and as you can now see, those shelves are full of all kinds of things, books and software and bits of technology, and more broadly in this room, there are three computers. Now, I will say before we get into the detail about those computers that I take the view that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Although on the channel here I do play around with computers, particularly things like Raspberry Pis, the computers I use to do my work get locked down and they don't get messed with. I don't experiment with them at all. And so you'll see some quite old technology in this video. You might be thinking my desktop will be all the latest stuff. Well, that really isn't the case for the most part. It's technology that has to keep working week in, week out, allowing me to get my work done. Right, the first machine I'll show you is this i3. This is the machine I do a lot of my non-video editing, non-graphics work on. So all of my writing, preparing client presentations, all of my email work, all my YouTube uploading happens on this computer. And it's a Core i3, a 4330T, running at 3 gigahertz, and it's got 4 gigabytes of a DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM. The thing runs a Windows 7 Home 32-bit, and it boots from a Samsung 840 Pro SSD, a 128 gigabyte SSD. It also has some uh, offline storage, which is basically, for me, storage on my desktop here I can save to to give me some level of backup. That's in a small cartridge. I'll show you those cartridges more later on. And the cartridge here is a 60 gigabyte Corsair Nova SSD, probably the oldest SSD I've still got in use. The only thing I added to this computer since you saw me build it, if you have seen me build it, if you haven't, go and watch the video. Only thing I've added since about January 2014 is I've added an extra SSD inside it. It's now got a 256 gigabyte Samsung Evo, which is just there to give me a bit more storage, in particular to keep track of all the YouTube content I keep creating, all the final YouTube files end up on this machine for upload, and therefore added a bit of extra storage. But basically, this is the machine that gets on with all the, the nitty gritty of office work and web work and things like that. Right, the next PC here, what I still think of as my main PC, although I probably use the i3 a little bit more in terms of time, is uh, this massive great floor standing machine, this large tower. This actual case dates back to 1993. This case has housed a Pentium 2 system, a Pentium 3 system, a couple of Pentium 4 systems. It used to have SCSI drives in it to actually get the speed to edit video. It used to be a very sophisticated machine because editing video used to be very hard. But uh, at the moment, since May 2009, which yes, is a long while ago, it's been fitted with a Core 2 Quad Q9550 running at 2.83 gigahertz. And it's now got eight gigabytes of DDR2 memory. It only had four when it was first built, but it's had the eight for about um, five or six years now, I think. Inside, there's a graphics card. The graphics card's been updated many times. It's currently got a GTX 650, a two gigabyte, gigabyte card, which went in in July 2013, as you may have seen in a video. When I first built the machine, it was running Windows XP, but from January 2012, it's been running Windows 7 Pro 64-bit, and that boots from a Samsung 256GB 830 Pro SSD. 
Now, because I use this machine for video, it's a lot of extra drives. The main video drive here is a two terabyte Western Digital black drive. And I also have on the front of the machine a cartridge bay, which takes the same sort of cartridge you saw me using as an offline storage on the i3. And this is normally loaded most of the time with a Samsung 256 gigabyte 850 Pro SSD, the, the best SSD I actually own. And this allows me to do rapid backups when I'm working on files, but also to store cache files on this. If you're doing video editing work, it's very handy to have all your operating system on one disk, that's the main SSD here, all your video files on another disk, that's the Western Digital Black, and scratch files for your programs on another drive, which happens here to be the, the Samsung Pro. I do sometimes take that out to actually do backups onto other cartridges. I've got a lot of these cartridges, mainly full of Western Digital Scorpio hard disks, not SSDs, but I don't actually take it out when I'm doing video editing work. In terms of an offline backup here, I've got a six terabyte Caviar Green disk. You might have seen me fit that in a video relatively recently. And to get things in and out of this machine, particularly from shooting video and recording audio and stuff, I often use this uh, Lexar USB 3 card reader. Really like this card reader, works really, really well, very, very fast, a fa fantastic peripheral. Now, I'd also point out the most recent addition to this PC is, is this uh, Anker USB 3 front panel. Very nice little front panel here, just connects to the USB 3 headers on the PCIe card card that give me USB 3. The motherboard here is far too old to have USB 3, so it's added on a card. And this is a nice little uh, metal panel, beautiful little panel. If you want a USB 3 panel to go on the front of your PC, get this anchor one, it's absolutely fantastic. If we move up onto the surface of the desk, you can see my arrangement of keyboard and mouse and graphics tablet and things. I use this low travel keyboard, which you've seen in several previous videos to try and help me deal with RSI and arthritis. And on the uh, video editing PC, most of the time I'm using this Wacom graphics tablet with a either a stylus or there's a mouse you can put and use on that as well. But most of the time I'm using the stylus. When I switch over to my i3, I then just drop on this small mouse mount. This is a nice manual switch over, and I use this 3M ergonomic mouse. So it's either the ergonomic mouse or the tablet 99% of the time to control these computers. If you're thinking, how do I switch between machines? Well, the monitor here has got inputs for multiple computers, a DVI and a VGA input. So I have the i3 connected via VGA and the main PC connected in via DVI. The monitor, as you can see, is a 5.4 monitor, 1280 by 1024. I happen to like it as a writer. You might have seen this monitor in a, in a video earlier this year. This is a nice IPS panel. I do own a 16.9 monitor. I might put a 16.9 monitor here at some point, but every time I try it out, I find I go back to this 5.4 ratio because as a writer, I find that the nicest thing to use. In terms of switching the keyboard over, I have a physical switching system up here. Why you say don't you use a sort of KVM system that automatically switches? The reason for that is because my video editing PC also does a lot of graphics work, often runs overnight rendering things. I want to have the absolute minimum resources involved when this machine is running, the minimum chance of the thing crashing. I don't want any other software getting in the way, so I have a physical switch over for the keyboard. I then also have an audio switching system here, which is a couple of very nice solid switches all wired together. And this allows me to take audio from various sources and to put it into these speakers. I love these creative speakers. For some reason, I'm very heavy on speakers. I burn speakers out every few years. Don't know quite why, at least for doing really good audio work with them. But uh, I like these. You can take off these mounts on the front, which is, I think, really cool and put them back on again. But uh, I just like, like these speakers. And I can even not just flick output from a computer here, I can even still use this mini disc player. Yes, I've still got a mini disc player sitting here in the middle of all these uh, memory card and USB drives and all that stuff you gather on your desk. Well, if you were paying attention, you'll note I said I had three machines on this desk and you might have noticed there's a monitor in the corner there an old um, 1024768 monitor, and this is connected to what I call my, my render box. This is a PC which has one single function, and this function is to render animation. It's actually fitted in a very, very nice case. Well, the best case I own, a really, really high quality, very, very thick metal case, which you'd normally use for a media center PC. 
I first built this in September 2003, there's a picture look of things going on then, and rebuilt the machine in April 2011. And currently inside here there's a Core 2 Quad Q8300 running at 2.5 gigahertz uh, with 2 gigabytes of DDR2 memory. And in terms of a drive, there's a 74 gigabyte Raptor hard drive, perfectly sufficient for what this needs to do. And it also runs Windows XP. And if you're thinking, that isn't safe, this computer never goes online. And what this computer does is it runs this program you can see running here, a thing called Screamernet, a command line program that basically takes files from my Lightwave packages I use to produce CG animation, 3D animation, and renders them out in this nice little command line to uh, the directories you can see filling up with these files. What's going on here? Uh, there's a file which is, um, which is a picture of a character in a film who's just about to die, I think, if we flick to the final shot by the magic of filmmaking. There we are. If you wonder what's going on there, then you'll have to have a look on my Explaining the Future channel. Check out the video on pharmacogenomics. It's a very, very exciting. This machine, as I say, just sits here rendering. It can often be rendering 24 7, 168 hours a week, it's rendering, producing animation. I've had film projects here where it's been rendering about 18 months of render time on single projects. Before I started doing my stuff here on YouTube on computing and, and the future and stuff, I had a YouTube channel about a character called Annabelle, Annabelle's Antics, which um, I produced all sorts of weird and wonderful animation. That was my first attempt on YouTube to get an audience. Lots of effort went in, unfortunately didn't work. This machine has also rendered out a pilot for a children's TV series called Lunatex. That also has gone nowhere. It rendered out, the first thing it ever did was a film called Android's Holiday, about a robot that went on holiday because she didn't like the job she had in, in a factory and she met a dolphin. It was all very, very strange. But as you can see, lots of stuff has been rendered out by these machines. They sit there rendering day in, day out. And the way I make it work is I store all the files I need on this machine. It renders out to a compact flashcard and then the files go back into the main machine when it's finished them. So, nearly there, but I realise I've missed a few things out, and if I don't mention them, you'll go, what about that? Well, I haven't mentioned, for example, yes, there is still a three and a half inch drive on my main PC. It's not connected up, I just can't be bothered to get all the uh, mounts out to take the thing out of the PC. And also here, there are two temperature gauges, which used to be connected to sensors inside the motherboard, which aren't, and they're still there for the same reason. I've also not mentioned sitting on top of the i3, you can't have missed it, this studio monitor. This is a 10 inch studio monitor, which I used to use when I was doing a lot of video for, for broadcast work. And it's connected through to the main PC via a Firewire connector. Yes, there's still a Firewire connector on my motherboard, connected through to this deck, which is a very nice deck, which has both a mini DV and a SVHS mechanism on it. I don't use it much anymore, even linking through to the monitor. I've yet to think about what to do with this. This is the legacy of video, but it's quite nice. It gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling having this old technology still around you when you're working on stuff. So here we are at the end of the 100th Explaining Computers video. And we've also arrived here just at the time that the channel has passed 10 million views. So, all I've got left to say is thanks to all of you who've supported this channel over so many years, thanks to everyone who's subscribed, who's liked videos, who's, who's made comments, and if you haven't done those things, please do them, please subscribe and like and all that, that sort of stuff, it really helps me and the channel. And now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.